Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. Now it's awesome, and we're in London's Hampstead Heath. It's a great spot for cityscapes, as well as catching all that autumn color. It's also a good spot for doing a landscape redux. Now, we haven't looked at landscapes for quite a while, so let's do a revisit. I suppose the first question I ask is what is landscape photography? I know it's a bit of a loaded question. For me personally, I don't think landscape pictures necessarily need to follow any set of rules. One description states that landscape photographs should typically show the presence of nature often free of any man-made obstructions. Now it's that word often that gets me. I think that we can expand the landscape. We don't necessarily have to have just trees or rivers or mountains, but we can include a bit of city and people even. I think we should open it up a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I love the classic way of taking landscape pictures. In fact, I do them all the time. But I also love the way that landscape photography has gone past that pastoral kind of scenes into urban, cityscapes, beach shots, whatever. Now, what's right or what's wrong, I'm gonna leave that debate up to you guys. But for us today, we're going to look at a few laws on how we can improve our landscape pictures. Of prime importance before any landscape outing is planning. I cannot emphasize how important this is. It's the making or breaking of your pictures. It's everything from the time of day, the season even, making sure you've got the right equipment, keeping your lenses and sensors clean, and crucially, knowing your locations. Now, you cannot leave locations to chance. Let me repeat that. You cannot leave locations to chance. Finding those sweet spots is usually a matter of good research. Google Maps, word of mouth, etc. Ordnance survey maps are great for topography and trails. Now once you've found these places, then you've got to record the times of day, the direction of light, the times of year, etc. And then you've got to keep going back over and over again to get those great pictures. It's a bit of a slog, but it's worth it. Cityscapes, same thing. Lens choice is the lifeblood of landscape photography. Now, I would say that most landscape pictures are shot on the wider angles, 21, a 24, or a 50. But don't forget, there's longer lenses as well. Now, I'm a little partial to the long lens landscape. I just love the way it compresses the scene. I just think it's got a really quite cool feel to it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna get a few still shots here of a really good scene behind me. Uh, the autumn colors really working well, but the sky, it's a little bit kind of the difference between the light um, is quite a lot. So I'm going to add a graduated neutral density filter to try and even the light out a little bit. And this is just a Lee filter setup for the for the grads. We'll mount it onto the tripod, of course, to give us that stability we need. And uh, we'll go from there and see what we get. Now there's two things that I'm always banging on about, um, if anybody's watched previous videos, and they are use a tripod when absolutely necessary or when necessary, and shoot in raw. So I think for landscapes, we're really looking for, for, the, uh, for the stability, because we're gonna shoot at our lowest ISO setting, uh, 100 with this camera, uh, Canon 5D3. So I want stability. So I'm going to set the pod up and get an idea where I'm going to go. And I'm going to use a long lens on this one. This one's going to be a long lens landscape. Make sure it's locked in place. Everything's tight. We got our, our uh, carrier for, the, uh, for the, the graduated neutral density filters. And then I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just check the light and I'm going to want to, I'm going to be want to, I'm going to want to shoot around F11, I think, for, for a lot of depth of field. So I'm shooting manual. And I'm going to slightly underexpose a little bit just to help bring those colors out a little bit. Now, once I've got my, my uh, compositions where I more or less want it, 
and and the light the uh, the, the exposure prop uh, correctly I'm going to pop in a, a grad filter this one is a two-stop a two-stop grad you pop it in the carrier and and then we're going to adjust that filter by bringing it up and down making sure the dark the dark point comes across the tops of the distant trees and brings the sky down just a little bit and I'm going to set the driver at two seconds so that I don't have to touch the camera after I press the shutter button now I could lock the mirror up as well but I haven't done it right now and when I take the photograph I'm gonna cover up the eyepiece just with my hand just to dispel any kind of light coming through the back I'm gonna have a look at it and I'm going to think at the back of the screen and do I need to adjust a little bit and I think I do so I'm gonna pop that back up a little bit so I can adjust my adjust the filter and the exposure and adjust the composition where I have to making sure making sure everything's focused one thing I forgot to say I'm going to pop the autofocus to manual focus bring that filter back in place cover up take another shot have a look at it looks good check the histogram and it's a raw file so from there I'm going to get in the computer later and I'm going to adjust the color the light etc to make the picture look like I see it and from here we're going to move closer and we're going to use a wider angle lens I've got the uh, the Lee filter graduated rig on again and I'm going to employ I'm going to go back to the to the three the three stop the three stop uh, filter stuffed in my pocket and we're going to stick that into the into the filter holder and we're going to adjust adjust that now the great thing with these, these filter holders you can move them around eh? it's fantastic just the angle of the Sun really so I'm going to stick it in there I've already set up my uh, my exposure and I'm going to adjust the uh, the brightness of the sky in the background okay it's just a little underexposed so I'm going to just change that a little bit reposition the grad remember the camera set to a two-second timer so I don't have to use a cable release I'm a firm believer in, in trying to get as much of your image finished in the camera rather than the computer but there are times when the computer is a real fantastic tool now I'm thinking Lightroom here now we're using these graduated neutral density filters um, and even though we're trying to even the light out sometimes it's a bit too much so I sometimes what I'll do is instead of using a heavy-duty uh, grad I'll use quite a light grad now and then finish it off in Lightroom now Lightroom has this built-in graduated filter that can be can be a great little tool it's it works really well when you've got subjects or parts of subjects in your image that are poking into the sky like trees or mountains etc because a graduated neutral density filter has no way of knowing the ups and downs and the pokey uppy bits of trees so that'll just darken that as well so if you use a grad filter it's not quite as heavy and then bring that into Lightroom and then use the Lightroom grad to try to even that out and uh, the great thing about the Lightroom grad is uh, within the construct of that that uh, graduated filter there's a shadow slider now the shadow slider if you take it to the right will lighten up the shadows so all those pokey bits up into your picture you'll tend to take a lot of the shadow out and not affect the sky it's a fantastic tool and something you should really look into using now we, we really haven't talked about uh, composition composition is a never-ending debate argument whatever you want um, there's many different ways of looking at a scene and composing it now one of the most popular compositional rules of course is the rule of thirds where you break the uh, picture or the back of your camera up into a grid pattern of a three by three it's a good rule but I don't think that every picture has to follow a certain set of rules you need some flexibility the composition should not be so set in stone that you can't find other ways of taking a photograph you know one of the biggest issues I see with landscape photographs is that photographers especially those first starting out 
try to get too much in a seam. Their eyes are bigger than their stomachs. Remember, less is more. Now it takes a lot of practice to create that eye where you can start to see what's most important in the scene. So the only way to hone your skills is to really just get out there and start shooting lots and lots and lots and lots. Only by doing this will you start to really understand how landscape pictures work. Color is not the only spectrum for landscape photography. Don't forget black and white too. Black and white almost seems like the natural home for these kind of images. Just look at the work of Ansel Adams, for instance. So when I'm photographing a landscape scene, I'm not just thinking of a color image, but I'm also thinking of a black and white image. And this is where some of that built-in software uh, for, your, for your computer really works well. Now, I personally use Nick software SilverFX Pro 2, and I think it's a great tool for making really stand out black and whites. So that's it for me. I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. Don't forget, you can also subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And tell us what you think. You can like, comment, or share this video. And do stop by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks.